Welcome to the Law of Attraction Traction Quantum Consciousness Connection and Creation with my mom, holistic psychotherapist Kareen Beerfeld. Kareen has worked in private practice for over 20 years and has witnessed miraculous recoveries treating those who've experienced trauma. Trauma stored in the body can subconsciously affect and determine our life experience. When unconscious programs and traumas are accessed and released, negative core beliefs and maladaptive behaviors can be permanently reprogrammed. Dive deeper into the law of attraction and go beyond whatever is blocking you from the life you want with Green Beer Folk. The law of attraction traction starts right now. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the law of attraction traction. That is the show with Kareen today. And I get to take this journey with her each and every time we do this show. And what I love about this is that when we get together, and you've just heard a little bit about Kareen's work and what she does in the world, this is about quantum consciousness. This is about connection. This is about creation. But one of the things that you'll hear today is what is it that has some people get in their zone and they keep moving forward? They like don't miss a beat. They make that field goal that wins the game instead of doesn't win the game. What is that all about? What is the energy of that? And on our way to do this, what is it we need to now know today about the law of attraction? It is still in play. It is still available. So what is up with us not using it? And that's what today's show is about. Kareen, I am so excited to be talking about the law of attraction traction because this is the part after the vision board's done and mine has lights on it after the vision board's done (laughs) and you kind of move forward there's some people that know how to build momentum and others that don't but let's talk for a minute about your effort and work to remind us what the law of attraction is and what it does Great. Yeah. I am. First of all, I am so excited to be here, Dr. Pat. So thank you for hosting me. Actually, I was driving uh, to work today thinking I get to spend a whole hour talking to you about quantum physics and the law of attraction and spirituality. And I can't imagine a better way to spend the afternoon. (laughs) So I'm so happy to be with you. (laughs) Well, you know, one of the things that I want to like start with is almost like a refresher on what the law of attraction is. I know for myself, I've got to get a refresher every day. I've got to have a reminder of what it is because it is such an impersonal law. Give us a refresher about what we know about the law of attraction and what you bring forward, what you bring forward in the work you do and the clients you work with. Give us an update up close and personal with the law of attraction. Would love to (laughs) love it. Uh, So yeah, the idea of the law of attraction is it's not something new. It's been around for a long time. And actually I think uh, more and more it's become mainstream. So, you know, there are people like, um, Esther Hicks, who channels Abraham and Jim Carrey and Oprah. And, you know, a lot of people now uh, understanding more and more this concept that our thoughts create our reality, that what we focus on, what we visualize, uh, what we are holding an energetic space for, we tend to attract into our lives. So um, in a nutshell, the idea of the law of attraction is that our thoughts send out an electric impulse and our feelings create a magnetic impulse. And together, when you combine those, we're basically electromagnetic beings. So as electromagnetic, electromagnetic beings, we are continuously attracting to us experiences, events, situations, and people that resonate with who we are and the, um, the thoughts and the feelings that we're sending out that are a vibrational match. You know, and and one of the things I love about the law of attraction, especially, you know, the experience about it is that I find when I am full gear and really feeling it, 
it is so I love the way it, it's it, Catherine Ponder talked about it many years ago. Many people don't even know who Catherine yes, Ponder is. I love is. Catherine Ponder. I know, right? Yeah. And um, I, I remember when I was given one of her first book, Dynamic Laws of Prosperity, and I thought to myself, this is the hokiest thing I've ever read. I know, right? Me too. I, <laughs> when I you mean, first start hearing about it, <laughs> it and does she seem tells out these, there. Right. You, yeah. And she tells these stories, right? And the stories she tells are in such straightforward layperson terms. But one of the things I love about, you know, this and what you're doing is that we have so much power. Yes. In what we fuel that electric charge with. Tell us about that. Because I can bring the most amazing things right to my doorstep. And I can also bring some of the not so amazing things yes. to my doorstep. Absolutely. Yeah. So actually, uh, you know, the way that I even got the idea to do this show on the law of attraction came from my own personal experiences for myself and also the work that I've done, you know, with my clients in private practice, because I've been a therapist for about 20 years and, um, so I can back up just a little bit. I started studying these principles probably like when I was a teenager in my early twenties. And, um, as a lot of therapists do, I came from a background of trauma, which is probably what led me to want to go into this field. And because of the, the history that I had had, I, uh, it, you know, especially as, as a teenager in my twenties had a lot of experiences with depression and anxiety and I was very motivated to want to do my own healing work and went to a lot of different therapists who mainly did the talk therapy. And it's not that I want to, you know, knock talk therapy. There's a lot of benefit to it. But what I would find is that even the ones who were more on the holistic path, who would um, be supportive or suggest like positive affirmations, you know, so one of the things is what that goes along with trauma is I had a lot of perfectionism, self-criticism, didn't like myself. So I had one therapist who recommended to say the affirmation, I like myself, I like myself, I like it like a hundred times a day. And I was motivated <laughs> and I did that over and over and over. And it made me feel better in the moment. But what I found long-term is that it didn't create a deep internal personal shift that was permanent. Yeah. So it was from my own experience with that. And um, as I started working with clients yeah. that I realized, you know, there's something more going on than just doing the positive self-talk. Yeah. And so that kind of led me on a journey of trying to figure out, all right, so what is it? What is it that causes us to not be able to manifest what we say we want? What is it that causes us to sabotage what we're looking for in our lives? And the answers to that are a lot deeper, but that's what I'm so excited to talk to you about today. I could sit here and listen to you like for hours. I know. I, I like had a you. moment where I just forgot I was like on the show. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I thought I was listening to, you know, uh, an audio course. You were so fun. I was so drawn to what you were saying because, you know, this is definite, you know, whenever that experience happens to me, when I'm so in the moment of listening to someone that is, it is so clear to me that this is beyond a passion for you. This is something you work with clients on to help them. Yeah. And you're right about it. I mean, once upon a time, we thought it was just a thought. Yes. Um, and I wasn't kidding. I jokingly about, the, you know, the <laughs> dynamic law of attraction, uh, excuse me, dynamic uh, laws of prosperity. I ended up teaching the entire series of Catherine Ponder's books because there's a moment in your life when you realize nothing is working. Yeah. And I'm speaking for myself. I don't know if you had that experience, Corrine. Maybe oh, not. Sure. Yeah, like, maybe um, not. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm sure probably everybody listening has. <laughs> but yes, I have <laughs> many, many times. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think when you get to that point, it, there's and, and somebody hands you either a book or, you know, puts someone like you in front of us, right? Mm. There's this moment where something catches to that spark. And, you know, today in the show, we're going to talk about the fact that there's an emotional intensity that elevates a bright vibration so powerfully, especially across digital realms, right? Yes. That this spark, this emotional spark, that can fuel so much 
in becoming a magnet. And isn't For that sure. the, what the law of attraction traction is about is to make sure we are magnetized as we go through life. Yes, it absolutely is. You, you nailed it. And the more clear the signal is that we're sending out. So in other words, when you talk about being magnetized, the more we can be in a state of experiencing from our heart that whatever it is that we're trying to manifest has already occurred and feel an elevated sense of emotion and gratitude about it, boom, the quicker it comes. So, um, and, and it, it's a very, it's as real of a principle as gravity. I mean, it's an absolute law. It works. The part that I, it took me a long time to understand is why sometimes it, you know, I couldn't manifest what I was trying to manifest. Mm -hmm. You know, part of what the conversation is about is we're going to talk about this today and we're going to talk about why does it work for some people? Why doesn't it? Why do dreams live? Why do dreams die? But the message that you're bringing forward is a message beyond possibility and inspiration. Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you from my perspective, I can point to the most ridiculous on paper affirmation I have made. <laughs> I have so many of them that on paper, they're absurd. They are really absurd. And yet, you couldn't convince me when I was 21 or something like that, when I looked at Linda and said, I am going to get a PhD. Yeah. You couldn't convince me there wouldn't be. And Linda says, of course you will. And I said, now, what exactly is that? See, it didn't matter to me that I, di I didn't know what that was. I just knew that all the people I delivered mail to in the phone company, at the end of their name, they had PhD. Yeah. They taught me how to play table tennis. They taught me how to juggle. They yes. taught me about how sound and frogs work. I was in my happy space delivering mail. I was the longest person in the mailroom in the history of Bell Labs because I didn't want to go to a job. <laughs> But isn't that what we're going to talk about today? See that fuel, that something, right? For sure. And I love what you're talking about in terms of uh, being 21 years old and having a dream and being so convicted in that dream. And, and, and you, if I'm correct, you do have a PhD. Yes. Yeah. And so. that, that, that story in itself is a complete um, affirmation to what you do. It yes. is a complete testimony to what we're talking about. Because on paper, it would have been on paper now, when you look back, I know on paper, when you look back, highly unlikely. Yes. But you know what? That's not what we're talking about today because paper is paper. We're going to take a short break. What is in your heart? What is it about the law of attraction, traction? that Karina is so brilliant about working with her clients. And when we come back, how can we demonstrate the power and the purpose throughout the show today about what happens when the spark becomes energized? What happens for some that it does and some that it doesn't? Today's show is all about you. And I want to say this to everybody out there. If you want to call in, and you want us to help you stand in an affirmation. Doesn't matter what it is, whether you're thinking, I'm going to go to school, I'm not going to go to school, I'm going to get the job, you know, whatever that is. If you want some help with that today, you know how to reach us 1 800 930 2819. When we come back, what happens when frustration shows up? We'll be right back. Kareen Beerfeld joining me here today. This is her show. We've got lots more to come. Stay tuned. Hey, everybody, welcome back. I'm so thrilled to introduce you to our new show here on Transformation Talk Radio, The Law of Attraction, Traction, with Kareen Beerfeld, Quantum Consciousness, Connection, and Creation. And you're going to hear in the many shows to come, you're going to hear about what does this idea look like? Now, when you say the word traction, you all know that just saying the word traction gives you an image. You may thinking of that giant tire on the beach that you love. 
and you're riding in that car and you just feel the traction, you feel the movement, you know, you feel the wind. It's just beautiful. It sounds like I need a vacation right there. Um, <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. Oh my God. I mean, let's <laughs> see image, myself on the it? beach right now. <laughs> uh, Kareem, before we go ahead, I, I want to make sure people know how to connect with you. So let's just make sure they can get a hold of you or find your website in case people have questions. But we'll take questions throughout the show. What's the best way for people to connect with you now? Sure. Yeah. My website is my name, which is kareenbeerfeld.com. Perfect. Yeah. And I'm going to spell it K-O-R-E-N-B-I-E-R-F-E-L-D-T. Yes. Uh, look, here we go. Been there. <laughs> Why awesome. does the law of attraction yeah. work for some people and doesn't work for others? You know, what is it about what we see some experience manifest, fulfill, happiness, joy, and then there's the other things that happen. And you know how I'm aware of this because I have both in my life, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm aware of that. But from your perspective, you know, yeah. what have you felt? I mean, I think part of the problem with the original introduction of the law and attraction, mm -hmm. we didn't do enough to help people refuel. Right. You didn't do enough to put those all wheel drive wheels on that car. Oh, I like that analogy. You're just running with this <laughs> traction analogy. I love it. <laughs> okay. So, so tell us about the frustration part of this. Yeah. Okay. So I actually, I'm going to just take you back to my own personal story, you know, and my own journey. So what happened for me, as I was saying, is throughout my twenties, I struggled a lot with, um, uh, anxiety, depression, you know, was trying to overcome my trauma and did all of the positive affirmations, spent years in therapy and still felt like, you know, why am I not, why, why are these principles not working for me? I read Catherine Ponder's book. I was trying to manifest prosperity. I would get a little bit in. And what I would notice is that as I was doing the affirmations or the exercises in the book, um, that I would start to feel, I would have negative emotions come up around prosperity or living in abundance. And then I would think that somehow I was doing it wrong because when, you know, the principles that we hear about law of attraction are you want to be in this elevated state, you want to be feeling like you're already abundant. And what would happen for me is I would find constriction in my body. I would start to have thoughts that were in opposition to what I was trying to manifest. And instead of realizing that that's part of the process, I thought, I can't do this. I, you know, so I, um, for a while would either try to push through, but at some point I think I just kind of gave up and it wasn't until I started, uh, what, what actually happened is I got, I, I found a training organization for hypnotherapy, which is this incredible organization. They're actually in Seattle in Washington. Where I know you are. Yeah. Um, and they started to teach me about it, it was, it ended up being much more than what I expected. So I thought I was just going to go to like a quick little course, learn how to do hypnotherapy, incorporate it into my practice, use it with my clients. And that would be it. And it ended up being probably one of the most life-changing things I've ever done. And in that process, what they, what they taught me was this whole idea of that so much of who we are, what we do, how we show up, the way we interact uh, is coming from a subconscious place not, which by definition means we're not conscious about the majority of energies and traumas that we're carrying in our body. And I had no idea about that. Um, and so through the training, then I started to learn how to become, how to start to access what was unconscious and make it conscious, which then gave, gave me the power to begin to make the really deep internal shifts I'd been looking to make. Um, that I hadn't been able to up until that point, because I remember when I hit my thirties, I having a, like a thought at one point, like, my God, maybe I'm just going to be stuck like this. Like, maybe I'm just gonna be stuck in the state of anxiety the rest of my life. So part of the reason I want to do the show is just to give other people that might have had similar experiences, hope there really is hope for healing and recovery, not just from anxiety and depression, but really to live the kind of life you want to live at the highest level. So I took that, you know, from, from those principles of starting to understand how to overcome you know, addictions and anxiety and depression. And then it occurred to me, like, you can apply this to any aspect of your life. You really can. Yeah. 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 
And what I love about this is the, you know, the background of this, especially when we look at the science, the neuroscience and the science of body, when we take a look at this, um, we're taking a look at the, uh, the unlimited potentiality that we carry within yes. us. And it is so, so powerful. You know, I've often thought about you, why was it created so that we would only, you know, progress to seven, eight percent of the use of our brain. I thought yeah. I've thought about this a lot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people have thought about it. And I thought, well, you know, is it because the progression has more to do with what we cannot see? you know, more to do with the subconscious elements of who we are. Yes, I would say yes. I think yeah. you're right on track with that, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think we have access to that now. I mean, I want to ask you, Corrine, for a minute, mm -hmm. because we are constantly attracting to us. Yes. And, and I'm, I, what I find is that there's so many bits of information that I take in in any given day. And what I'm really clear about is I have to apply a lot of tools to make sure that that thing that you're calling the law of attraction traction doesn't mm -hmm. lose traction. Yes. Yes. Right? Um, you know, let's talk about, you know, creating a different reality and what mm -hmm. you're, you know, what you've learned from this, from both mm -hmm. the conscious and unconscious state, you know, what is really available to us to access? Sure. Yeah. So <clears throat> one of the things I learned in my training is that our conscious mind is really only 5%. Neuroscientists will tell us uh, 5% of, of our mind. And so, you know, that means 95% or more is uh, we're operating from an unconscious place. So most of the time we're operating unconsciously and don't know it. So it's kind of like that analogy of the iceberg where you see the top of the iceberg and it looks like it's a, you know, a big part, but it's really only the sliver and the unconscious is like the, the very deep aspect that's beneath the surface. Um, that for most of us, a lot of time is, um, having a huge impact on our lives. So the piece that was missing for me when I was trying to attract in my twenties was understanding that we're not just creating consciously that what is happening is that what we're holding on an unconscious level is also creative. It's also causing us to manifest things. But a lot of the times if what we're holding unconsciously um, are our negative beliefs, then we're, we're attracting negative things into our lives without even realizing that that's what's happening, that our unconscious beliefs are creative as well, that they attract to us as well. And, you know, one of the things, too, that I, I think it's important to point out to really just piggyback what you're saying is that we have enormous, enormous ability to attract that which we want. And, you know, what I think about is we're going to talk about the experiences. We're going to talk throughout the show about how things have shown up in our lives and what the law of attraction has has to do with it. I mean, there's so many things that, uh, you know, that I've gotten to hear in 18 years from people, I'm but sure, none more powerful than Jack Canfield's story, mm -hmm. you know, I and, and, right. Yeah, I mean, yep. it so reminds me of my journey in a way when you have been rejection after rejection, after rejection, after rejection, and you get those letters in the mail. Yeah. And, you know, I think about the fact that both he and Mark were unwavering about publishing chicken yep. soup for the soul, the soup for the soul. Yep. Unwavering. And, you know, they never gave up and they, they went to the point of, I uh, you know for Jack bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And I, I, I heard his story and I heard what he said. And I heard that last bit where he said to Mark something like, we have to go to this Florida this one last publishing big event deal where all the publishers get together and they packed themselves out and they went and they walked around the entire place and everybody was a no, mm. but they didn't waver. They didn't. What I love about this is they had a moment 
Can you imagine 160 something rejection letters? I got 35, but they got 160. Yeah, that would something. probably put me over the edge, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. I'd, yeah. I'd but be ready to, to give up. Yeah. On the way out. This is what I love. This is the part of the story I love. I wonder if they didn't have that unwavering conviction right there as they started to walk to the last booth. The <laughs> last booth. Yeah. The one that they talked with. The publisher that said yes to them. At the end of their rope. And see, this to me is what I love about what you're bringing. See, we need to learn how to have that traction and the moments where it doesn't seem likely. Hmm. Yeah. And remember, they're walking and they get to this booth. The last one, I could imagine what was going on for them, but I could also imagine how much they believed in what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And it was that last publisher who said yes. And a lot of other publishers were scratching their heads. I was going to say, after. imagine being 105 <laughs> ones that said no. Like, <laughs> How you would feel? <laughs> they're, they're like, who's the representative that said no to this book? Right? right? That's what we're talking about here today, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we're talking about. I, I want to speak with you when we come back about all the folks you work with that are like this, that really... Mm -hmm believe in their lives, they hold to it. And how this works, how do you build that traction? Because yeah. see, it's a, is it a secret sauce that those two <laughs> guys had? Or is it something that we can share with the world? Kareem sure. Bierfeld is going to be telling us about the fact that she shares this with everybody. <laughs> this is why when you go to work with her, and you look at the clients, and she's working with people, it doesn't matter what walk of life, Mm -hmm. There's a traction building aspect and momentum. When we come back, are you ready to get those big, fat, all wheel drive, put them on that car, raise that car up and ride into the sunset <laughs> on the beach in Kauai? My favorite island. Let's, one of my, take, that's my let's favorite go too. now. Let's go now. Let's go. I'm you holding got me that motivated. Dog. We're going to do Kauai. Let's take a short break. <laughs> Benny, everybody, let's go to Kauai when we come back. We'll be right back. <laughs> hey, everybody, I want to welcome you. Welcome to a brand new show on Transformation Talk Radio, The Law of Attraction Traction with Kareen Beerfeld, Quantum Consciousness Connection and Creation. You're going to hear a lot more from Kareen. But basically, we're giving you an introduction to why this show is called The Law of Attraction Traction. How do we build traction in creating the life of our dreams using the law of attraction? And what I love about this idea, Kareen, what I love about this is that this is the kind of thing that we do almost every day in our life. We build traction in our lives in so yes. many different ways. I mean, you watch, you know, watch it. I watch my mom, mm -hmm. you know, take care of a family, go to a job. And I could see her building this traction, building yeah. a momentum to create things. But tell us from your perspective, right? You know, if we consciously create this reality, mm -hmm. but we have these unconscious thoughts that are in opposition, mm -hmm. You know, it's almost like kryptonite and Superman. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Kryptonite's going like, to take Superman down. <laughs> yeah, and it's like when... It's uh, pretty much it. That's how it works. Right? <laughs> That's, it's a good analogy, Dr. Pat. Yes. <laughs> but, we, you know, look, if you can... I, and part of what you do is help us understand what our kryptonite is. Yeah. Because if we get that... Is there a way we can really look at what's blocking us and remove right. it? Yes. Love the question. So, and that is what I do in my work with my clients. Um, and I have to say, I love my clients so much because I tend to attract the best people who are just so open and so willing and motivated to do the hardest work because they just 
are committed to doing whatever it takes to make their lives better? And so the answer is yes, there is a way. It's not always easy because what it involves is being willing to um, turn inward toward the places in ourselves that we block ourselves from achieving what we say we want to achieve. <clears throat> so I usually, I'll say to my clients, um, two principles, what you resist persists and what you're willing to feel you can heal. So what does that mean? That means that as long as we are running away from our internal traumas, which are usually mainly unconscious, but they're always there, like right under the surface, um, as long as we're trying to avoid them, they will continue to basically run our lives. Like you can't escape them because wherever you go, you take them with you. You know, wherever you go, there you are. So you could go to the most beautiful beach. You could go to Kauai. We were talking about Kauai on the break and sit on the beach and be in a, a beautiful environment. But if, you know, if you're a person who's carrying a lot of, um, unhealed traumas and anxiety, the anxiety is going to come with you even to the beach. Yeah, it is. So <laughs> yeah, you, know, um, you can't outrun it. So yeah. the only way to heal for real, which takes courage is to be willing to turn inward and to face it. And so that's why this principle, what you're willing to feel you can heal is so true. So, um, you know, the easiest way to find where you're blocking yourself for, from being able to achieve what you say you want is to envision the life you want, imagine that you already have it, and the unconscious parts of yourself that are in opposition to that, that you don't know are there, will surface. 100% of the time will surface. So just like when I was saying in the beginning, you know, in my 20s, I was trying to do Catherine Ponder's work and I was trying to manifest abundance. And I would notice that I would kind of get this sick feeling in my stomach, or I would just feel constricted, or I just feel like blah. And I thought I'm doing it wrong. No, I was, that, that was actually what was supposed to happen. I just didn't know that was part of the process. So what I, the work that I do with my clients is really, um, and this is whether we're, you know, trying to manifest like living, moving to the next level in their life or heal from depression, you go to the part that is the pain. So, and a, a lot of times what we do is we use our bodies as the access point because your body doesn't lie. Yep. There, um, Basil Vanderkalk is, a, he's very well known. He's done a lot of work with trauma. He's written a, a wonderful book called The Body Keeps the Score. Love his work. Um, and he talks a lot about that, how trauma is stored in the body. That's yeah. why like, you know, when I was doing the, the positive affirmations of whatever it was I was trying to manifest, it didn't work because, because it's the trauma is not in our head, trauma is in our body, but our body is like the access point. If we learn how to listen to our body um, and really be willing to tune in and become mindful of what our body is telling us. Yeah it reveals, you know, our secrets to where, when we're brave enough to feel whatever it is that it has to say to us, that's where we move from, um, feeling like our traumas are controlling us to where we can become empowered and heal them. Yeah. That's the beauty of the work. You know what I love about what you're saying? Let's give some examples because, um, how many times have you bumped yeah. into somebody that says, Oh my gosh, I got this headache. It just won't quit. Yeah. And I mean, I'm giving you a very common, typical example, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The body is talking to you right there. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. I'm not sure what the conversation is that it's having <laughs> with you because I think it's different, but the yeah. point is your head hurts. Yes. Um, yes. Another common one is your back hurts. Yeah. Very common. Um, I was talking to somebody the other day, their head, they couldn't move their neck. Mm -hmm. Now, how do I know this? I mean, when you go through a series of body, body things breaking down, like I went through from 04 to about 08 or 09. Mm -hmm. When you go through something like that and you're so unaware yeah. You either learn 
about what's really going on and why it's going on, or it's going to stay with us. Yes, that's exactly um, it. You get the lessons or the lessons are going to keep showing up. And usually <laughs> they don't, first it's a tap and then it's a little smack and then you get the two by four <laughs> sooner or later, if you don't want to listen. <laughs> And you know, it's interesting, everybody does this in different ways. You know, let's talk about the shift that happens with this, because I love that you referenced that book, but I want to talk about the shift because yeah. awareness, I believe, and I am just a fan of awareness. Awareness is that thing that is just so powerful. Mm -hmm. Being aware, oh my gosh, was I really thinking about that today? Or being aware of, wow, I didn't take that action and I need to find out why I didn't take that next step. What stopped me? And nine times yeah. out of 10, I have been able to seek out someone that could help me. Isn't this what we're talking about today? Because the hardest thing for us is ultimately to see us and see what's in our way. But the end yes. goal, isn't that ultimately true happiness and fulfillment? Yes. So what is your question? <laughs> How do we get to that place where yes. we realized I'm running in place? Mm. That may yeah. be aerobic, but I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're like the hamster, right? On the I'm wheel. Right <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, how do are. we get to the point that we recognize that? I don't know. I think I think it's very different for each person. Some people um, heed the call quickly. And again, for others, it takes them really being brought to their knees, which it has for me, you know, in my life, um, more than once to say, okay, what is it that I need to look at here within myself? What is it that's yeah. going on that I need to heal here? Um, because I really do completely uh, recognize consciously the, the principle of like, I believe that the universe is supporting us in our highest good. So that means in the positive experiences, as well as in the, what we would call the negative experiences, I've learned to try to even in those experiences, embrace those. And sometimes in the, the worst of experiences, what I would have thought was the worst experience at the time, I can look back in hindsight and say, my God, those were some of the greatest blessings only because they helped me to heal at levels that I never would have been able to had I not had those experiences. Mm -hmm. And then moved me forward in a way to bring me where I am now. So I can right. now, you know, hindsight is 20, 20, look back with, with tremendous gratitude. Yeah. And you know what I love about this is we're talking about something that really is typical of one of the, I believe the only freedom we have, and that's the freedom to choose. Yes. And if we have the freedom to choose what goes on inside of us, it is very powerful. But we keep looking on the outside for things, right? Yes. I mean, and I don't even want to go into the list. It doesn't matter yeah. because this is really paradoxical. You know, honestly, looking on the outside is what? It's that kryptonite maybe. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up because I love going deep. And that's really the, the at the very core of spiritual principle. That's what we're talking about. So um you know, what I've learned is that there, so, you know, some people have more of what's called an external locus of control, which is that they tend to look outside of themselves for fulfillment, fulfillment and happiness. Um, and thinking that, you know, it's that whole, I'll be happy when I'll be happy when I get the relationship, I'll be happy when I get the job, I'll be happy when, you know, I get the degree. And, and it's not that any of those things are inherently bad. Um, but what I have come to find is that even if you get those things, <laughs> it's like a fleeting happiness. So it is a whole paradox because we're doing this whole show on how do you attract those things that you want, right. you know, but the, the paradox is that the, it's like, as within, so without that principle of who we're being on the inside is going to match what shows up externally. So the paradox is the more we can get to a place we, where we sit in gratitude for what we have and can allow ourselves to be fulfilled exactly where we are and to see the blessings all around us in every moment, the more blessings will pour into our life. So it's like 
the more we're in that state of already knowing that we're whole and that we're fi fulfilled and that the universe is supporting us in every way, even when uh, experiences externally seem to be um, like what we would call negative experiences at the highest level, even that is us being supported for our highest good in our growth. Um, it, it's such a, a wonderful paradox that, yeah. so the more that, and I found this with around like control as well. Like the more somebody tries to control the external environment or tries to control other people or control situations, often the more out of control they will feel. And paradoxically, the more you just surrender and say, you know what, I, I, ha I cannot control my environment. All I have control over is how I choose to respond. And if there's feelings coming up within me, I'm going to turn within and look at healing those feelings. The, the, the thing with feelings that I found too, is they're so temporary. So if you have a painful experience and you're just willing to turn within and meet it and stay with it and, you know, mindfulness, the practice of mindfulness, I'm going to go within, meet my feelings, meet, feel my body, not run away and stay with that and breathe long enough. The negative feelings usually will dissolve on their own because underneath all of that, there is peace. Like underneath all of that, we are already connected to all that is we are. Yeah. It's just that we're kind of like gunked up, like <laughs> <laughs> all of our traumas and negative experiences are covering over the, the truth of who we really are. And, you know, this is really, let's just talk about this because this is such an integral part of traction Yeah, in the law of attraction, traction. And, you, you know, it's really fascinating for me. I'm going to give you an example. And this yeah. is the most craziest benign example. It's like a typical example of what, what happens in our day. I ordered a piece of equipment, exercise equipment, because I got two knees and I've got to build some muscle. I mean, why would yeah. you get two new knees if you're not going to do what you need to do to prep? Right. So I ordered this piece of equipment that didn't have a ship date. It was like, I think we'll get it out in seven days, but then it's going to be shipped and it's coming from, I don't know where, Canada. And in my mind, that was just like stuff on the paper. And what's fascinating, you know, I, I went and I got my space ready for it, get it ready to come. It's being delivered today. Don't you love that? How I mean, wonderful is that? You created that, the space and there it is. Beautiful. And so let's, these are the things that we're going to talk about as we go, because I could have bought into that story. I could have not created the space. Yeah. I not ordered really cool pictures for the space. I mean, I could have not done things in preparation, but I acted as if it was coming today. Yeah. And of course, I'm not home to get it. And it's a, it's two big pieces of equipment. I don't know where they're going to leave it. Mm -hmm. But the point is, it is how it can work for everyone. Mm -hmm. It absolutely can work for everyone. Yes. And I'm just thinking about how, you know, you had asked me to give you examples. Um, there's so many examples that I've experienced in my own practice, some of them really profound. Um, as far as, you know, people coming in and shifting in ways that have surprised me to the, uh, you know, kind of raised my level of awareness of what's even possible. Um, so I have seen in terms of, you know, mind body connection, I have seen people recover from what would have been considered even terminal diseases in the 20 years that I have been doing this. And yeah. it's, it's, uh, you know, wasn't, these people didn't do it instantly. It was a matter of continuously turning within, listening to their bodies, um, focusing on and, and being willing to just stay present to what their bodies were telling them, feel the pain, cry, express the emotion, release the emotion out of their body over and over and over um, until there were, you know, what would be called miraculous healings. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, can I just say that this is really the underpinnings of what we're going to be talking about as we move forward with the show, yeah. you know, because why, why is the law of attraction traction so important? Ultimately, it is really to really tap into that, that beautiful superpower we have within yes. and create a life and a reality to it 
that is so brilliant. I mean, often I say things like, I'm going to create a Victor Frankel reality, yeah. you know, or I'm yes. going to create a reality, you know, that right. goes beyond. Right? My gosh, is there any better example of when you talk about like locus of, of control is, and someone to choose to be in a concentration camp and say, all I have control over is how I respond and I'm going to choose to see the beauty in it. I mean, my gosh, it's so powerful. I, I've read the book. I read it every year mm -hmm. and it's a hard read sometimes. I'm yeah. finding it a harder read to read sometimes. But what you're bringing forward in the law of attraction traction is, and, you know, as we continue to talk about these in upcoming shows, is really to provide inspiration fueled by the power that we have within us to create the life we want. Yes. And that really, to me, that is one of the most powerful gifts that you could give us in the time we're living in now. I think that's what we're all here for is to, to find that spark, that inspiration, you know, that divine spark, that radiance within each of us to find what our gifts are, to bring that forward so that we can play our part. Like I, my personal belief is that we are all on an awakening journey and that as we all tap into our um, highest potential and we are open to sharing our gifts at the highest level and doing the work that we all need to do, because I think we all have work to do to clear the parts of ourselves where we play small, um, that as we rise up and we contribute at higher and higher levels, that's where our greatest joy and passion is found. And also the greatest sense of contribution, um, and how we're going to make the, the greatest difference in other people's lives and, and in the world and in the planet. Well, like, what could be better than that? I love that. What, how does it get any better than that? Thank you. Curry. You know? Thank you for today. Um, I want to ask you this last question. Uh, I'd love to know what you'd like to leave us with what your personal message is. And again, let folks know how they can find out more about you. And there's mm -hmm. more to come. You know, this is the first of many shows we'll be doing. So thank you for raising us up here today with your message. What do you want to leave us with today? Yeah. Um, you know, I just love the message and the idea that we truly are unlimited beings. We, we are unlimited beings. Um, we all carry within us the spark of the divine. We are here to radiate that into the world. Um, and my message to all of the listeners is, first of all, thank you for, for taking the time to listen to this show. I'm happy to be able to be a part of your journey. And I'm just going to hold that for each of you that you continue to raise up to be that light in this world that you're meant to be, that we're all meant to be. Boy, uh, what a great way to really take the conversation. Again, how do people find you on Facebook, et cetera? Yeah, it's, it's um, right. My website is my name, which is kareenbeerfeld.com and it is spelled weird. It's K-O-R-E-N-B-I-E-R-F-E-L-D-T.com. <laughs> Um, and there's more to come. We're excited about talking about how to build traction, especially as we move through this holiday season. Mm -hmm. And it's such an important message. I mean, certainly for me, I've become more aware. And I think that we have so much within us, as you stated today so beautifully. So thank you for yes. thank you for a great show today. Thank you so much, Dr. Pat. Thank you for making me feel so comfortable. Well. I loved our first show. It was so great. I so appreciate you. Thank you. Well, and I want to say this to everyone because we are speaking to everyone is I want to just say this to all of you. I know you call me, you contact me. I know that there are some tough times that you're experiencing and have experienced in your life. And I want to say that you can add the most incredible examples of superpowers you have within you. They really are superpowers. And these shows we're doing, the show with Kareen today, is to help all of you find that spark, find that place. Let it ignite. Let it fuel your dream. Let it step you up to a level of consciousness and awareness. Let it move you forward to the greatest power to take action in the world. And may you do that in such peace, such joy, such abundance, such amazement for what you are capable of. And it is unlimited. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining the Law of Attraction Traction with host, my mom, Green Burfo. 
Tune in every third Tuesday of the month at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio and learn how you can heal from the traumas and conditions you thought were impossible. Get inspired to pursue your own healing and growth so that your light shines brighter than ever. To learn more about Kareen and her and the services she provides as holistic psychotherapist, visit her website at kareenbeerfeld.com.